Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third episode of the English Bookshop Quotes podcast. And um, today we have a book review. Um, obviously, <laughs> the the book that I'll be talking about today is um, has been one of the most requested books that I think in the history of of the English bookshop Kuwait um, yeah the book is incredible like <laughs> there are some great book uh, I mean there there are some great parts about this book obviously with every book there are some parts that you don't really understand or there are some parts that don't really make too much sense obviously this book is one of them um, so the book that we will be uh, reviewing obviously as you can tell from the title of this podcast uh, is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi uh, sorry if I'm butchering the name obviously I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not so great with the uh, I'm not so great with pronouncing uh, certain names so I'm sorry about that if I'm butchering the name uh, so, in a small back alley in Tokyo, there is a cafe which has been serving carefully brewed, ca- brewed coffee for more than 100 years. But this coffee shop offers its customers a unique experience, the chance to travel back in time. And before the coffee gets cold, we meet four visitors, each of whom is hoping to make use of the cafe's time-traveling offer in order to confront the man who left them, receive a letter from their husband whose memory has been taken by early onset Alzheimer's, to see their sister one last time, and to meet the daughter they never got the chance to know. But the journey into the past does not come without risks. Customers must sit in a particular seat, they cannot leave the cafe, and finally, they must return to the present present before the coffee gets cold. Toshikazu Kawaguchi's beautiful, moving story explores the, o- explores the age-old question. What would you change if you, if you could travel back in time? More importantly, who would you want to meet, maybe for one last time? Before the Coffee Gets Cold is an interesting book about an underground cafe. Aside from the cafe's carefully brewed coffee, it also offers an unusual service, which allows its customers to travel back in time or forward in time under certain uh, certain strict rules. Obviously, we have mentioned that you have to sit in a certain chair at a certain table, and you may not get out of your chair while the event is occurring. You can go back to the past at any time, but you will not meet anyone who has not come to this cafe. No matter what is done, the present will not change in any way. The thing you want most to prevent will always occur no matter what. Coffee will be served while sitting in the chair. Of course, you have to drink the whole coffee before it gets cold and come back to the present. If you don't follow this rule, you will get stuck in the past. Most people look back at these rules. However, some people turn to the past by accepting these. Now. That particular chair is always occupied by the ghost of a woman in a dress who is always reading a book. The only way to get into that chair is if she gets up and go to the bathroom. So the best way to get that happen is to keep her coffee cup filled. Apparently, the ghost drinks the coffee and eventually she gets up from that seat from from her seat to go to the bathroom. This is the only time when the seat is empty. At this point, the person who wants to travel the time dash into the seat before the ghost comes back from the bathroom. So there's this one particular quote that um, that really stuck with me. Um, at the end of the day, whether one returns to the past or travels to the future, the present does not change. So. This raises the question to me, just what what is the point of that chair? This this book explores the personal opportunities of time travel amongst the small group of workers and customers at this backstreet Tokyo cafe. 
The book is arranged with four such stories. Each story focuses on love as it exists within different types of human relationships. Lovers facing separation due to career opportunities, a married couple dealing with the husband's worsening dementia, a strange sisters trying to balance their own dreams with their family expectations, and a woman in the early stages of pregnancy imagining her future child. Even if you cannot change the outcome, you can learn what led up to that event. However, even if you visit someone who has passed, or even if you go to visit your husband before he is taken by Alzheimer's, you still might find inner peace in unexpected ways. Though you cannot change the present or future, traveling back or forward to the time allows you to read a letter that never arrived or was delivered. Change the course of a prior conversation to better understand the person's thoughts or motives. Find a way to bridge it, you know, meet a child that you did not live to raise. Or come back to see a mother who died giving you birth. My my impressions of the book varied over the course of reading it. Of the four parts, I found the first part the least engaging and the central character rather bland. Especially the beginning where too many characters were introduced. Building off the backdrop simultaneously and establishing relationships between the characters made it a little exhausting and confusing to read. Things began to make sense as the story progressed. The latter parts of the book pro- provided some insight which I appreciated and made reading this book worthwhile. I personally haven't read a lot of Japanese fiction in translation and perhaps it is a, it is as a result of cultural differences or of the book's origins as a play script but it felt like the prose and the plotting lacked nuance in parts. In translated fiction it can be hard to judge how much of the problems are the result of mistranslation and how much are the result of the original. But I certainly felt like the writing let the story down. I was also left feeling a bit confused that the role and importance of the ghost woman dressed in white, who acts as a sort of gatekeeper to the special chair, was never explained. Being such a closed room story, which takes place entirely within the space of one environment, also made the story feel very closed in. There is no room to breathe between stories, no world to explore, and while on some level I like this, I feel like the author doesn't give us a broad enough overview of what the cafe really looks like, and the atmosphere uh, in the cafe, uh, to really be drawn into this environment. An intriguing idea, with some interesting moral and social viewpoints explored, but this just missed the spot for me emotionally. Whilst I appreciated the takeaway from this novel, that re-evaluating the situation, changing one's attitude and making peace with the past can go just as far as actually changing events. I did feel that it needed to be made far more overt. The concept that sitting in a specific chair can be the vehicle needed to encourage a change of heart is original and clever. Overall, this book, as I mentioned, is is a really interesting uh, book with some delightful moments of insight into the complexities of human relationships. Um, obviously, I'm not here to, uh, you know, uh, give out spoilers, and I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm definitely not recording this episode in order to encourage